I had just managed to fall asleep when the phone rang, its shrill tones slicing through the quiet of my bedroom. I groggily reached for it, squinting at the screen to see an unknown number flashing in the dark. 2 a.m. A call at this hour usually meant a crisis. I was the CEO, after all, so I took the call. But instead of a voice on the other end, all I heard was static. It was loud, hissing, pulsing, as though some distant force was pressing against my eardrum. I nearly hung up, but just as my thumb hovered over the button, I heard something else through the static, a whisper. A voice, faint but unmistakable, called my name. Michael. I froze, listening. The voice was so faint I wasn't sure if I'd actually heard it, or if it was just the grogginess playing tricks on me. But then it came again, clear and unmistakable. Michael, come, to us. It sounded familiar, like someone I should know, yet distorted, almost hollow, as if speaking through layers of old, brittle tape. I pulled the phone away from my ear, staring at the screen. The call had ended, the screen blank. Then it rang again, the same unknown number flashing insistently. I answered, annoyed, thinking it must be a glitch in the company's security system. Hello? I snapped, expecting silence or more static. But this time, there were more voices. They started faintly, overlapping in a murmur, barely perceptible but unmistakably there. They spoke in soft whispers as if pressed close to the receiver, whispering secrets meant only for me. My stomach twisted as I realized what they were saying, every word a fragment from my life, memories I'd buried, moments only I could know. They whispered about things I'd done, choices I'd made, secrets I'd kept from everyone, even myself. Each voice was distinct, growing louder, layering upon one another until I could barely separate them. The whispers were pleading now, urgent, desperate. Michael, come to us. I pressed the end call button, cutting the voices off with a shudder, but the relief was short-lived. Almost immediately, the phone buzzed in my hand, the unknown number flashing again. I answered, hoping to end it once and for all. Stop this, I said, my voice low but shaking. Whoever you are, stop. This time, the voices fell silent, and the static hummed lowly, as if waiting. And then, from deep within that hiss, one of the voices spoke again, softer than before, almost gentle. Michael, come to the conference room. I felt an inexplicable chill run through me. The company building was empty. Everyone had gone home hours ago. Who could possibly be there, asking me to come? But the voices, with all their haunting familiarity, held me in a strange, spellbound grip. They knew things no one else knew, things that could ruin me, unravel every careful secret I'd stashed away. My hand trembled, and though I had no reason, no logical reason, I felt compelled to obey. In a daze, I dressed and drove to the office. The building was dark, eerily empty, and every shadow seemed to pulse with anticipation as I made my way down the deserted halls. My footsteps echoed, bouncing off the walls as I approached the conference room. I paused, my hand hovering over the door handle, half expecting to wake up, to find that none of this was real. But when I opened the door, I stepped into darkness so thick it felt alive, wrapping around me as I entered. The room was freezing, the air tinged with the sharp scent of ozone. My phone buzzed in my pocket, but before I could reach for it, the static erupted all around me, filling the room with that same cacophony of voices. Michael. Welcome. The voices weren't coming from my phone anymore. They seemed to be embedded in the walls, the air itself vibrating with the whispers. I felt them pressing against my skin, sinking into my mind. They knew me. Every lie, every betrayal, every misstep. They recited them back to me in a mocking, damning chorus. Remember the things you tried to forget, Michael. I clutched my head, trying to drown out the voices, but they only grew louder, speaking of things I'd hidden deep within me. Decisions made in the dark, secrets meant to stay buried. I stumbled back, intending to leave to escape this nightmare, when I felt something shift under my feet. A buzzing sound rose from beneath the table, deep and guttural, if vibrating through the floor. I looked down, and my heart stilled. Phone cords, black, frayed, and endless, they slithered out from under the conference table like writhing serpents. They coiled around my ankles, binding my feet to the spot. The cords snaked over my shoes, creeping up my legs, their touch cold and suffocating. I tried to kick them off, but they tightened, their grip impossibly strong. As I struggled, the voices filled the room, laughing, echoing, overlapping in a sinister symphony. Stay with us, Michael. 
I reached for my phone, desperate for any signal, any chance to call for help. But as I pulled it out, the screen showed the same unknown number calling again. The phone cords climbed up my arms, wrapping around my wrists, and I dropped the phone in horror. It fell to the floor, screen shattering, but the call con continued, echoing through the room as if the phone itself was alive. The voices grew more insistent, pleading, You belong here, Michael. We've been waiting for you. With every word, the cords tightened, inching higher, coiling around my torso, winding up toward my neck. I gasped, struggling to breathe, to scream, to do anything to make it stop, but the cords pressed harder, constricting my chest, each breath growing more shallow, more desperate. And then, out of the darkness, I saw faces. Faces I recognized. Former employees, people I'd fired, people I'd wronged, each one gazing at me with eyes filled with a silent fury, a wrath that was far beyond death. They stepped closer, their forms flickering in and out like shadows in candlelight. One by one, they spoke, their voices melding into that terrible, inescapable chorus. Stay with us, Michael. It's time to pay what you owe. I tried to shout, to beg for forgiveness, but the cords tightened around my throat, squeezing the words out of me. The faces closed in, their hollow eyes staring, never blinking, their lips stretching into smiles that were far too wide. And then the buzzing grew louder, drilling into my skull, until it was the only thing I could hear. The cords squeezed tighter and tighter, pulling me down, and the floor began to give way beneath me, splitting open into darkness that swirled, pulling me in. Just before everything faded, I heard one final whisper, faint but clear, as if it were being spoken right inside my mind. Welcome home, Michael. The world went black. The next morning, the board members found the conference room empty, save for a lone phone lying shattered in the middle of the table. No one knew where the CEO had gone. His car was parked in the lot, his phone crushed, but there was no trace of him anywhere in the building. And yet, every so often, in the silence of the conference room, a faint buzzing sound can be heard, followed by a chorus of whispers, as if echoing from somewhere deep within the walls. They say, if you stand there long enough, you'll hear him, whispering from beyond, begging to be let out. The fluorescent lights in the office flickered as I hurried to the copy room, my heels echoing down the empty corridor. It was nearly midnight, and the building was deserted. Everyone else had gone home hours ago, but I had a big presentation in the morning, and I couldn't risk leaving without making sure everything was perfect. My heart pounded with a mixture of exhaustion and nerves. Inside the copy room, the hum of the copier greeted me, low and steady like a dull heartbeat. I placed my document on the glass scanning bed, adjusting it just so, and hit start. The machine whirred to life, lights blinking as it scanned my pages. I watched the paper slip under the glass, then emerge from the side in neat, warm stacks. Everything was fine, and I was just about to relax when I caught sight of the first sheet coming out of the machine. My stomach dropped. Instead of my document, the page was filled with an image, a grainy, black-and-white photograph of a woman's face. Her eyes were wide, filled with terror, and her mouth was stretched open in a silent scream. Her expression was so vivid, so horrifying, that I stumbled back, blinking, convinced I was seeing things. But when I picked up the page and stared at it, the image didn't change. Those eyes, wide and empty, stared right back at me. What the hell? I muttered, setting it aside, my hands shaking as I watched the machine continue to churn out more copies each one bearing the same image of the screaming woman. Page after page piled up, an unending cascade of terror. Her face was the same in every copy, but something about it seemed to shift, almost imperceptibly. Her eyes seemed to follow me, her scream growing more desperate with each page. My hands felt clammy as I looked down at the glass bed of the copier, wondering if there was something stuck inside, something that was causing this, this glitch, I lifted the lid and stared down, and that's when I saw it. A faint handprint pressed against the underside of the glass as if someone were trapped inside, desperately pressing her hand against the scanner bed. The hand was smeared, almost like it had been pressed there for ages, worn into the glass itself. A chill ran down my spine and I slammed the lid shut, stepping back, my mind racing. This wasn't possible. This couldn't be real. The copier stopped abruptly 
silence filling the room. For a moment I thought it was over, just some horrible malfunction, and I could escape back to my desk, put this nightmare behind me. But then, as if with a mind of its own, the machine powered up again, lights flashing, and a single piece of paper slid out onto the tray. This page was different. Bold black letters filled the page, each word thick and sharp, written with an intensity that felt almost aggressive. Help me. I backed away, my hands trembling as I clutched the edge of the table, staring at the message. My mind screamed at me to run, to get out of there, but my feet felt rooted to the spot. Then, breaking through the silence, I heard the faint buzz of my phone. I glanced down at it, and dread pooled in my stomach as I read the message. Come back to the machine. I'm behind you. I froze, blood pounding in my ears, the weight of the words sinking in. The room felt suffocating, every shadow stretching toward me, reaching. Slowly my hand trembling, I turned around, half expecting to see someone standing behind me, to feel that hand from the glass reaching out to touch me. But there was no one there. Just the empty copy room, the hum of the machine, and the dim overhead lights casting eerie shadows along the walls. My heart was hammering in my chest, and I could feel the prickling sense of being watched, of unseen eyes boring into me. The copier word to life once more, startling me, and another page emerged, this time with a new message. Why did you leave me? I swallowed, a knot forming in my throat. The words felt like an accusation, each one pressing against my mind, demanding an answer I didn't have. I racked my memory trying to make sense of it, but I couldn't think of anyone I'd left behind, anyone who'd... Another text buzzed on my phone, cutting through my thoughts. This one made my blood run cold. You know me, Clara. Turn around. I couldn't bring myself to look this time. I shut my eyes, clutching the edge of the table, my breath coming in short gasps. I thought of all the horror stories I'd heard, about buildings haunted by former employees, about restless spirits lingering long after death. My mind raced, spinning with every ghost story I'd ever dismissed as nonsense. But now... The copier hummed again, and I dared to look. A new sheet slid out, bearing a single phrase that hit me like a punch to the gut. Do you remember the accident? An image flashed through my mind, an old memory I'd buried, a memory I never wanted to think about again. Years ago, there had been a fire in the building, and a young woman named Evelyn had been trapped on one of the upper floors. I remembered the panic, the screams, the helpless feeling as we watched from the street. We'd all been evacuated safely, everyone except her. Evelyn. The woman who'd sat just a few desks away from me, who I'd spoken to every day but barely knew. The guilt I'd felt in the aftermath, though irrational, came flooding back now, overwhelming me. I had forgotten her face, forgotten the details, moved on, and left her behind in the rubble. But now it seemed she hadn't forgotten me. The lights flickered again. And suddenly, I saw her reflection in the copier glass, staring back at me. Her face was pale, her hair dark and tangled, her eyes hollow and accusing. That same twisted, open-mouthed scream I'd seen on the copies contorted her features as she mouthed silently through the glass. Help me. My legs finally unlocked, and I stumbled back, pressing myself against the wall, desperate to escape her gaze. But her reflection shifted, following me, her eyes darkening, her hand reaching toward me through the glass, pressing harder, cracks spider webbing across the surface. The machine roared to life, pages spilling out in a frenzy, each one filled with that same screaming face, her eyes growing darker, emptier with each page. The message repeated over and over, scrawled between images. Help me. You left me. Why didn't you come back? I clutched my head, squeezing my eyes shut, trying to drown out her voice, but it was useless. The copier's hum deepened, turning into a guttural roar, and I could feel the room growing colder, shadows pressing in. Then, just as suddenly as it began, the noise stopped. Silence fell over the room, heavy and complete. Slowly, I opened my eyes, the air around me thick with the smell of burnt paper and ink. I looked down, and my stomach twisted. The floor was littered with hundreds of pages, each one bearing Evelyn's face, each one whispering silently, accusingly, help me. But that wasn't the worst part. The worst part was the final page that lay on top of the pile, freshly printed, bearing a message that made my heart drop. It's your turn now, Clara. My phone buzzed one last time. I didn't want to look, but I couldn't stop myself. The message was simple, chilling in its familiarity. 
I'm right behind you. I felt the cold breath against my neck before I could even turn around. It had been one of those soul-crushing days that stretched endlessly, each hour grinding me down further. The rest of the office had gone home, leaving me alone on the 32nd floor, the vast silence only punctuated by the hum of fluorescent lights and the occasional clatter of air conditioning. My eyes were heavy, and my skin felt grimy from stress and exhaustion. I needed a moment, a quick wash-up before I finally headed home. The bathroom was cold, an unwelcome chill that cut through my fatigue as I entered. I splashed my face with icy water, letting the shock of it wake me up a little. For a second, I closed my eyes, feeling the water trickle down my face, grounding myself in the solitude. But when I opened my eyes, my heart froze. There was someone behind me. I blinked, hoping it was a trick of the light, but no, the figure remained, standing in the mirror behind me. It was a woman her posture perfectly straight, her head tilted ever so slightly, staring directly at me with wide, unsettling eyes. Her expression was something between a grin and a grimace, the kind of smile you'd see in a nightmare. And the worst part? She looked exactly like me. My breath caught in my throat, heart hammering against my ribcage as I stared at this version of myself. I spun around, expecting to see someone, anything, but the bathroom was empty. The stalls were closed, the fluorescent lights casting harsh, cold reflections on the white tile. Trembling, I turned back to the mirror, hoping the vision would be gone. But it was still there. My reflection hadn't moved an inch. But her expression? It had changed. Her eyes were a little wider now, her smile a bit too large, stretching her lips in a grotesque grin that no human face should be able to make. Her mouth began to move slowly, her lips forming words I couldn't hear each syllable spoken in silent precision. Let me out. I gasped, stumbling back, but the reflection stayed, her eyes glued to mine, that terrible, hungry smile stretching wider. She lifted her hand, pressing it against the mirror as though trying to reach through it, her fingers pressing hard against the glass, causing thin cracks to spider outward beneath her palm. I turned and ran, nearly tripping as I stumbled out of the bathroom and into the empty hallway. The silence was oppressive, wrapping around me like a suffocating fog. I glanced over my shoulder, expecting to see her following me, but the hallway was empty. Still, I felt her presence, like eyes on the back of my neck, watching me as I fumbled with my phone, desperately trying to call someone, anyone. But the screen was frozen, flickering, the familiar home screen replaced by static that seemed to pulse in time with my own frantic heartbeat. Then the static cleared for a brief moment, just enough for me to see my own face on the screen. It was that same twisted smile, her eyes glinting with something dark and wild. She mouthed two words again, her face contorted with a sickening mix of pleading and delight. Let me out. I dropped the phone, watching as it clattered to the ground and went black. My mind screamed at me to leave, to get out of the building, but my body felt frozen, paralyzed by a fear I'd never known. And then I heard it, a faint sound echoing from down the hallway. A whisper, soft and taunting, yet unmistakable. Janine? It was my own voice, stretched and distorted, but undeniably mine. I backed away, my mind racing as I tried to make sense of what was happening, of how my reflection could speak, how it could follow me, even without a mirror. The lights above flickered, casting long, distorted shadows along the walls. And then from the corner of my eye, I saw her my reflection, or whatever it was, standing just down the hall. She was smiling that same twisted smile watching me, her head tilted like a predator sizing up its prey. I turned and ran, not daring to look back. My footsteps echoed against the polished floors as I sprinted down the corridor, the sterile light above flickering in sync with my racing heart. My mind screamed at me to reach the elevator to get out of this nightmare. I rounded the corner, and there it was, the elevator doors gleaming at the end of the hallway like a beacon of salvation. But just as I was about to press the button, the lights above me flickered and went out completely. Darkness swallowed everything, leaving only the faint emergency exit sign casting a dim red glow over the hall. And then I felt it, a cold, almost electric sensation prickling up my spine. Slowly I turned around, my breath coming in shallow gasps. She was standing right behind me, so close I could feel the chill radiating off her skin. 
Her head was tilted down, her eyes hidden by shadows, but I could see that smile, twisted and gleeful. She lifted her head slowly, her gaze locking onto mine with a look of pure, ravenous intent. Let me out, she said, her voice low and filled with something dark and ancient, as if every word were soaked in malice. I pressed myself against the elevator doors, my hand frantically slapping at the button, willing it to open. But the doors stayed shut, unyielding, trapping me there with her. Why do you want to keep me in here? She whispered, her tone mocking. I could be... So much more if you just let me out. Her hand reached up, touching the side of my face, and I flinched at the cold, her touch searing like frostbite against my skin. Her grip tightened, her fingers digging in with unnatural strength as she leaned close, her eyes gleaming with a kind of desperate hunger. I've been waiting so long, she whispered, her voice so close it felt like it was inside my head. Don't you think it's my turn? The elevator dinged, and the doors slid open. Summoning the last of my strength, I shoved her hand away and stumbled inside, frantically pressing the button to close the doors. Just as they began to slide shut, she lunged forward, her hand jamming itself between the doors, her face inches from mine. You can't hide from me, she hissed, her mouth stretching into an impossibly wide grin, teeth gleaming in the dim light. Not forever. With a final, desperate push, I smashed the closed doors button and the elevator doors finally shut, severing her hand from her body with a sickening crack. The severed hand lay twitching on the floor, dissolving into a thick, black mist that seeped into the floor. The elevator began its descent, and I pressed myself against the wall, gasping for breath, praying that I'd left her behind. When the doors opened at the lobby, I staggered out, my mind reeling, my body numb with terror. But as I stepped out into the lobby, I caught sight of a reflection in the polished surface of the exit doors. My reflection. She stood there, watching me, her twisted smile growing wider, her eyes gleaming with a promise. And as I stumbled out into the cold night air, I could still hear her voice, whispering inside my head, echoing in every reflective surface I passed. I'm still here, Janine. I'm always here. And one day, you'll let me out.